Are you recording? Yeah. Okay, I just want to uh, start by um, reading the words of the Lord. <clears throat> when he had this conversation with the woman at the well, um, in John chapter 4, John chapter 4 and verses 23 and 24, right? Verse 23 and 24. Uh, I think it's a well-known scripture. Jesus says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Okay, So this scripture talks about, um, about the true worshippers who will worship the Father in spirit and truth. It qualifies by saying the true worshippers will worship in this manner. So it's not something, uh, while it could be something external, but it's beyond that. It is in spirit, out of the innermost being, and in truth, which means that there is no pretense, there is no hypocrisy uh, in the words that, that, that are being spoken or said in worship and in the condition of the heart and what, what we truly mean. Uh, there's no there's no difference right between that and and uh, verse 23 also says the father is seeking such now the father is seeking such he's looking for such worshipers right who will worship in spirit and in truth so um, like we learn a lot in that um, just that one verse that he's looking for the heart he's looking for um, spirit uh, led or uh, out of our innermost being worship and he's he's looking for worship that is um, that is truthful sincere and not superficial uh, not out of pretense okay then verse 24 God is spirit and about the very nature of God God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth so you know it's it's like a condition a command a qualifying statement saying that this is the quality, or this is the qualification of those who who want to worship Him. That they must worship in spirit and truth. Amen. Just a reminder: uh, even as we go before God in worship, even as we have worship uh, as a lifestyle, you know, that's not not just the corporate times of worship, but uh, uh, but even uh, or, or not only dedicated times of worship, uh, personal worship, but also uh, our life itself. Right, that when we worship Him um, through our giving, through our um, through our uh, e through our everything, through uh, you know through our acts of kindness, uh, to our generosity, through our consecrated life, that it's uh, it's a worship of spirit and truth. Right? So let's pray. Let's just uh, dedicate ourselves to God. Um, Father, we thank you, Lord, that. Um, Lord, this is the kind of worshippers that you are seeking, Lord. Oh God, may we be worshippers, Lord, who will worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, may we be worshippers, oh God, who are sincere and, and Lord, worship you according to what's laid down in your word, God. And may we, Lord, be people who are worshipping out of our innermost being, oh God, and out of our spirit, oh God, as led by your Holy Spirit, Lord. And Lord, may we be people, oh Father God, Lord, who will do this, who will, who will recognize the fact that it, this is what you want, oh God. And because those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. And Father God, we pray that we will we will be, um, Lord, mindful of this truth, mindful of this, um, Lord, this condition, O oh God. Uh, the, your desire, your expectation is that we worship you in spirit and in truth. And so enable us to do that, Father God. Lord, even as we draw near to you this morning, Lord, we draw near, God, as we are, Father God. Lord, you know the condition of our hearts, O oh God. Lord, we don't try to be someone else, O oh Father God. Lord, we draw near in truth, O oh God, and we worship you in spirit 
spirit and truth, Father God. Yes, Lord, we, we just want to declare that you are who you say you are, God. Lord, we just want to lift your name, praise you, O oh God, for who you are, Lord. That you are, O oh God, the eternal one, O oh God. You are our loving Savior. Lord, you are us, Lord, our Lord. You are the one who leads us, Lord. You are the one who guides us, O oh Father God. And uh, yes, Lord, we just want to thank you for all those times, O oh God, that you've led us, that you've guided us. Lord, we thank you for all those times, O oh God, Lord, for all the breakthrough, oh Father God, because you are all the you are the God of of breakthrough, oh God. We all we thank you for all those breakthroughs that you've given us, God. And Lord, we, your desire is that we be true worshippers. Lord, enable us to be true worshippers all the time, Father God. All the time, may our life be a life of true worship, Father God, worshiping in spirit and in truth, oh God. Maybe maybe be a authentic people of integrity and truth, oh God. Maybe be Lord proclaimers of truth. May truth be found on our lips and in our hearts, Father God. And, oh God, in the motives of our heart, Lord, in everything within us, oh Father God, may we be found in truth, may we be found in love, oh God. Yes, Master, we, we commit ourselves to this, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, let's uh, get started. So we're looking at... Uh, Winning, winning with people, right? Winning with people, and um, we saw that um, you know, as as leaders, and and typically as as Christian leaders, leaders in church, and typically in ministry, um, you know, people are part and parcel. You know, we cannot lead in a vacuum. We cannot minister in a vacuum. It involves people, right? Yes, there are different forms of ministry where uh, you know maybe you can. We can be uh, engaging with technology and so on, but ultimately it's about people, right? So we we need to interact with people. We need to be, um, you know, we need to fellowship with people, and and so on, because we are the body of Christ. So we saw that uh, in order to uh, win with people, or in order to you know lead in a successful manner, where you know, you're leading successfully and the others are also getting benefit out of it. So in order to win with people, um, you know, there are some some things that we, we want to look at. And last, last class, we looked at how our, um, in order to get ready to relate to people, uh, we looked at a few principles, right? We looked at the lens, we looked at the mirror and the pain principle and, and so on. We looked at those. So today we are looking at another aspect when it comes to people, you know, first is that what what really prepares us to relate, and uh, this is some this is also something that will enable us that will help us um, in relating to people. Um, in in uh, uh, it, it's a very important skill for us to have. Okay, a perspective and skill that is that we need to be uh, other centric. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that uh, our focus. Um, we need to have a focus on others. Okay, we need to esteem others. We need to uh, our focus needs to be on others. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at a few principles, uh, six principles to to help us uh, to focus on others. You know, the the thing is that um, uh, well, again, just like. Uh, in wanting to relate to others and preparing ourselves, you know, uh, these are some things that uh, that come naturally, right? Maybe it's part part of our temperament and personality, but um, again, uh, it could be in a you know, it could be in varying levels with uh, with different people. So it it helps to grow with that. Right. So similarly here also, like we could be other focus. We're not saying that we are we are totally not. You know, we don't focus on others, uh, but 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 it could be in varying levels, right? Or maybe we could be in a place where we're saying, you know, because of our past experience and so on, we could be in a place where we're saying that, um, you know, uh, we we are concerned about ourselves. Uh, we put our ourselves first uh, more than others, and. Uh, and maybe it's because you know of, of our past, right? Maybe it could be because people, uh, you know, we didn't have much, and uh, we have that survivor mentality. So we just want to fight to get things for ourselves, and uh, irrespective of what happens to others, um, and and so on, right? So we want to put others or put us first. We need to understand that uh, you know by nature, 
okay by nature um we are self centered to a large extent right uh, either it's for survival either it's for you know personal growth or achievements and and the world system is like that right we are constantly fed and and uh, nurtured in those philo philosophies you know that um, yeah we need to get ahead right? especially you know you know in, in the asian countries and 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 other you know developing nations that we need to get ahead you know that's the message that comes comes through you know if you're working in a, you know in a corporate setting that it's like you know you need to kill the competition you need to get ahead um, you need to win no matter what the cost and so on right um, and uh, and so the focus becomes more and more about uh, us inwardly rather than the other person okay uh, you know uh, a small you know uh, uh, practical example is um, well if if there's a let's say if there's a class photograph or a group photograph uh, in which you you know you also you know you were also there um, natural our natural tendency is to is to see where we are first right if you look at any photograph maybe you know uh, you know you it, you it was a group group thing and you, you took a selfie or you, uh, your natural tendency is to look at how you are how you are first right how do you look uh, and and then to the others right very rarely do we look at all the others and look at us first okay so that's that's how we are wired right we look at ourselves first and right? and how we are doing and uh, are we uh, you know are we getting enough uh, is there enough for us and self preservation and security and all that comes to us naturally now that's a healthy thing as well right because unless you take care of yourself you can't take care of others right so that's uh, in the sense if you are not functioning well uh, then how can you Know, reach out and help others right so there's a healthy way of looking at it but uh, there is a unhealthy way also in the sense that no matter what i must come first right no matter what my needs must be met first right and there's no concept of sacrifice and so on so, but when it comes to relationship or teams or you know when it comes to leadership uh, we must be other focused okay there's a there's a book on uh, book on leader leadership by Simon Sinek and it's called the leaders eat last okay um started reading it i've not finished it but it's it's generally about putting people first you know as, and as leaders uh, of course we know that he's a secular you know author uh, and so on but then you know these principles we see are from the word right okay so uh, let's look at the first one first of the principles uh, you know it is the big picture principle okay the big picture principle which means that um, you know like someone said the entire population of the world with one minor exception is made of others <laughs> the entire population which means that hey, there is a whole lot of people out there and actually i me myself is is a minority Right. It's made of others, so we need learn to look at the big picture. Um, you know, there's a, uh, a popular cartoon. I, I was trying to get that, uh, I didn't get around to it. Um, by by uh, it's called Peanuts, Charlie Brown, and Charlie Brown is one of the characters, and then Lucy is another character, and they are in the playground, kids in the playground, and Lucy's on the swing, and and Charlie Brown uh, says, "Do you know that the sun actually goes around the world? Um, the sun revolves around the Earth." And uh, and then Lucy says, oh, "Really? I, all this while I thought that it revolved around me." Okay, so that is that is how it is, right? Everything revolves around me. It's about me. This whole life is about me. Uh, it's about you know me living this out and me uh, you know reaching this and it and to some extent you know it it is yeah uh, it is true but then it becomes a whole lot about completely about us i me and myself right and there's no room for anything else anyone else um and then we realize that having that attitude um is is a great hindrance when it comes to relating to people 
okay friendships um, other relationships you know even marriage uh, courtship marriage and all that um, there's a it becomes very very challenging because you constantly are self centered selfish and there's no room or uh, place for others and um, others are not um, you know esteemed right others opinions do not matter others uh, needs do not matter it's all about us and uh, and it's it's very difficult to to get along with such a person you know, where uh, you know your needs matter most uh, or you know if one's opinions uh, matter the most if one's needs matter the most if one thoughts uh, uh, what needs to be given importance and so on right so we need to have the big picture that i'm zooming out and then i see that there are a whole lot of people around me there are a whole lot of needs around me right so this will help us to begin to focus on others right? we look around we look around at people we look around at uh, you know the lives that we are connected to um lives that uh, you know the people who serve us and and uh, who depend on us as well and then we realize that okay there's a there's a big world out there where right? there are there are people out there uh, and uh, it's not just me right? and then we open our eyes to see that there are others as well philippines 2 verses 3 and 4 let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Okay. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Okay. So the first uh, uh, verse three says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, you know, especially when it comes to you know, uh, a leadership. Uh, when, especially when it comes to, um, you know, a, a position of spiritual leadership or even otherwise, let nothing be done through selfish ambition that I be promoted and I advance and I'm using all the others in order to promote me, right? Promote my agenda. Now, that would be selfish ambition right? or conceit or pride. You know, let... Uh, everyone else do their thing in order to feed my pride or feed my ego, right? And uh, the, it's very clear that rebuke is let nothing or the exhortation is let nothing be done. Okay, what? Let nothing be done. Even if we think that, okay, you know, uh, this is a minor thing, it's okay, uh, you know, it's 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 for a, it, it's okay, you know, to be selfish for a little bit. You know, it says, let nothing be done through uh, selfish ambition. Let nothing be done through conceit or pride. But in lowliness of mind. Okay? So it doesn't matter whatever the position or title or responsibility or you know the, the level of influence um, that we might be carrying saying let in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself okay because there are things in others um, because when we when we put ourselves first we are actually blind to um, the, the qualities that others might have the skills the others might have right the, the giftings that others might have. Right. And we, we fail to notice them in the first place. And because we fail to notice them, we fail to you know, really value and appreciate that as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, a, a true Christ likeness, you know, Christ likeness, or as we grow in Christ likeness, spiritual maturity, um, a mark of it is that we become other focused. Because the Lord Jesus himself said that, um, you know, I have come um, not to be served unto, but to serve others and give my life a ransom for many. Right? So that's the Lord's, uh, you know, that's the Lord's perspective. And Philippians, again, too, talks about that, um, that, uh, um, that let this mind be in, in you, which was in Christ Jesus. 
who uh, who though he was son of man son of god he he actually humbled himself um to the point of death right so he humbled himself made himself of no no of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and humbled himself to the point of death even the death of the cross and therefore god is highly exalted him right so to have that mindset okay um now it's uh, it's easy when others are also humble and others are also uh let's say docile uh you know or, or others are talking well of us they are they are also easy to get along with and you know they get along with you well then it's then this it's it's easier right it's easier but when when that is not the case right when people are difficult when people oppose our views when uh, people look down on us okay when people don't agree are not in agreement with us then it is it, it becomes difficult to practice that right to to think of others in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself and and the fact is that the lord jesus you know he did this under the most difficult of circumstances right it was not an ideal circumstance it was the, his own creation was rebelling his own creation was not acknowledging and receiving him so <clears throat> excuse me but yet uh, he he did that anyway he had this mindset he humbled himself right so uh, so also with us okay and and the lord will teach us lord will teach us to do that in the right way right? do that in the right way um you know without uh, uh you know because, because there's a right way of doing it right without giving up without compromising on truth um and, and so on right the second uh, the verse 4 it says let each of you look out not only for his own interest but also you know there's so much in not only and but also uh, not only which means that uh, it's it's okay to take care of your interests right you your your needs your maybe the people surrounding you immediate family and so on so it's it's okay right not only which means it is fine but it says go beyond that go beyond yourself go beyond your needs right go beyond you know what you what you want what you need go beyond that it says go beyond yourself right not only look out for his own interests but also for the interests of others there is that but also following the not only so um let's be reminded of that okay um yes my needs are taken care of i'm i know i'm and i'm just ensuring that but there is a but also right but also for the interests of others so even as we take care of our own needs let also let's also be mindful of um, the others let's also be mindful of the interests of others okay um so with uh, this also this this so this is the big big picture principle so in, in the big picture it's not just us but in the big picture there are others others who are part of you know our lives others who um, you know we are put there to to take care of others uh, who we are put there god wants us to serve god wants us to help um, god wants us to you know be an example to and which means that we need to consider them we need to esteem them um better than ourselves okay okay so that's that's one the second one is um um the exchange principle okay now this uh, again practical wisdom right to you know there are there are two 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 kinds of views right one is um the first and foremost and the most natural thing is our perspective of things you know, we view 
things from a certain vantage point right and uh, we see others from our perspective okay so maybe our team members maybe our colleagues maybe you know people our neighborhood everything we see from our perspective so the exchange principle is uh, be willing to view uh, things or the world from their perspective because uh, their perspective you know, it just means that Try to put yourself in others' shoes. Like, you know, the, the saying goes, you know, try to walk a mile in other people's shoes, right? Um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, when we look at our footwear, it is it is comfortable, you know, after uh, walking in a, in, using that, you know, using our shoes or slippers, or whatever, for some time, it is actually kind of, because of our weight and all that, it's it's kind of shaped, for our feet right and and nowadays you have shoes with memory foam and all that so it's very comfortable it's shaped it just makes that you know uh, our walking and running very very comfortable it just shapes uh, and and allows our feet to fit in right and what happens when we wear someone else's footwear okay so immediately you realize you know even if you if you if you try and Let's say you know there's a gathering where you need to you know, take your shoes off, and, and you come out, and then you you wear something which is uh, which looks like yours or it's similar, you know, design and color and everything, and you wear it, and then you realize, hey, this is not mine. It's not fitting me properly, or that even if it's the same size, you know, that contours or everything inside that sole, you know, that's so different, and you don't feel comfortable. Right, and uh, and the thing is this: you don't want you immediately take your feet out. You don't want to walk in it, right? So the thing is, when we try to walk in other people's shoes, meaning their challenges, right, their circumstance, um, whatever is bothering them, troubling them, um, you know, whatever whatever is going on in their life. Uh, in their circumstance, okay, then we begin to understand. Okay, okay. If if I if we begin to even think, okay, what if like, okay, then we understand. Okay, oh, this is this is a challenge, and then so um, it's we are able to excuse certain things, right? Overlook, um, and we are also able to uh, understand, empathize. Uh, with where they are coming from, right? So it's 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 very important. Like um, uh, I know someone who is, uh, you know, who's lost completely, lost vision in one eye, right? So uh, she's a senior person, and uh, she's also one one eye is completely gone, completely blind, and one eye, and then she has other other things, you know, with challenges with mobility and so on. So. So sometimes I'm, you know, I, I, I'm like, you know, why, why can't she just get up and walk? And she needs to exercise, and um, she needs to, you know, keep herself healthy and and all that. And uh, but then I realize her age. I realize her, uh, you know, her muscles being not being strong because of, you know, mis, I mean, disuse rather. And uh, more importantly, you know, this. Uh, this lack of vision in one eye, and so I know the you know, and tried walking. You know, I tried living with uh, you know for some time with just one eye closed. It's it's difficult. You know, you lose peripheral vision completely in one side, and that's not a comfortable thing. It's not a comfortable thing to walk on the road you know, you, to walk with one eye. You know, you don't know what's coming here. You don't see a hand here, uh, whereas you can see it here, and and so you know, it's completely no knocked off you. And then uh, compound that with, you know, age. Compound that uh, it becomes it becomes difficult. Right. So, so similarly, you know, when you, when you look at others and uh, their perspective, you know, why is that person behaving like this? Why is that person so, um, you know, doing this, saying this? Then you begin to understand. Hey, there is a reason for this. Right. There is a reason, and then we begin to. You know, uh, we begin to empathize, right? And uh, well, I'm not saying that we excuse their bad behavior or excuse their, uh, you know, lack of commitment. No, but but we begin to understand, 
and from that place of understanding we can actually address it right and i remember meeting someone and this was actually in one of our uh, um, you know what we have in uh, a church as a as a, a, a kind of a lunch for newcomers right where um, newcomers to church let's say for the past three months is invite them over for a meal so they get to meet the leadership of the church the pastors and leaders and so on and also interact and get to know about what church is about and it's a fun time you know you just get to know about the vision and so on and then during one such time i, I realized there's this there's this young guy who was uh, who was very rude in his you know in his behavior with uh, in his in his whole interaction you know he would uh, he would put people down and and it was just a game that everybody was playing but then he was very he was coming across as very brash and very rude and so on so i mentally made a note, made a note of it you know this is a rude guy uh, then then i think over many years uh, i kind of you know because i am from a different you know uh, I worship at a different location so so didn't really uh, was not really in uh, touch with this person and then and then after many years okay got in touch with this person again and then he started coming there and then got to know about his life the kind of struggles the kind of challenges and uh, you know everything the, the disappointments and uh, the broken relationships and all that and then realized you know the way he is he's a you know he's it's not been addressed and so all this hurt and pain and everything is carrying and and therefore um, he's behaving that way so i was able to understand that okay well without excusing um, his behavior you know not making a change in that not compromising on that yeah as far you know if there's anything to do with lack of integrity you know immorality we don't excuse that right but we understand okay this is this is the reason so i understand that but uh, and that empathy gives us a, uh, i'm just i know i'm just steering off a little bit but that empathy gives us a um, uh, you know bridge to interact right? that empathy gives us um, you know an opportunity to for conversation and uh, or dialogue right and uh, the person is able to open up because they know that you understand okay so so this is one thing which helps us to relate to people even better right which helps us to understand people which which is valuable in uh, in relating to others you know while we are talking about being other focus this will help us a practical way uh, what are the challenges that they are going through what season of life that are they in and so on right and and the, and the good way to do it is not to you know condone any bad behavior or bad attitude condone meaning you know approve you're not approving it right at the same time we are empathizing why they're doing what they're doing okay so there's a difference right okay so uh, romans 12 10 be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another okay so the exchange principle okay um Okay, we'll we'll have some time for questions, but we'll just look through uh, the other uh, a couple of more at least. Uh, the third one is the learning principle. Okay, so the learning principle also enables us to be other focused. Uh, so this principle is that any everyone, okay, everyone or anyone can teach us something. We can learn something from them. If we let them, we can learn something about them. We can learn something from them in our interaction. If if we are open, if we let them, okay. So which means that we need to have that drive, the desire to learn, right? to learn something that is good uh, from from life situations, okay. Um, so we need to have that openness. We need to have that desire. Okay. And it come it can come from the unlikeliest of sources. It, the, it need not be you know people who know God, people who no. It can be like Jethro, you know, Jethro being the uh, you know the father-in-law Moses who who did not actually was not a worshipper of Yahweh, right? But he acknowledged that you know Yahweh has blessed Moses and everything, 
um, and he acknowledged that, but he was not a worshiper. But he comes out with that important principle of delegation in leadership. Right? He's the one who actually tells Moses, you know, this is what you must do. Right? You're tiring yourself out, hearing the uh, you know, people's complaints, and you're, you're just one man. You know, uh, how can you do that? You raise up leaders and appoint people who will take care of tens, and you know, and then the um, that that delegation principle. We see that Jethro is actually, um, um, you know, imparting, uh, just instructing Abraham, and then Abraham. I'm sorry, Moses, and then Moses goes ahead and does that. Okay, uh, so we see that it can come from the most unlikeliest of sources, right? So, uh, but if we would be open. We can definitely learn, and and th this also help uh, helps us to take our focus off ourselves, and it's it not only enriches us but also enables us to, you know, interact with others and uh, learn from others. Okay, and uh, I was I was just looking back uh, and thinking of uh, people whom I know from the immediate circle, and uh, you know, if if you look at you know if you just think. There's something that you've learned from them. I was just realizing that I said something that I've learned from them, things that I've they, they have said, or their outlook to life, um, the way they they worship, uh, you know, the the way the, their relationship with God, right? Uh, something that you learn. If at all, you, uh, if not, you know how to do things. At least you learn how not to do things. You know. They can teach you that as well. So something we can learn from others, right? And uh, so humility is required to learn. Humility is required to learn, and uh, humility means being being open, right? Uh, being willing to receive. Okay, I'm sure you know that story of uh, you know this uh, this king who was very tight fisted, very stingy. With uh, you know he would. Um, uh, he would not. He was not known for generosity at all, right? He he would he he would take, never give, right? Very stingy. And then one one day he goes on. He's on horseback and he's riding, and and his horse stumbles and he falls into this river, and uh, he's uh, unable to help himself. So the minister is saying, "O oh, king, you know, give me your hand. Give me your hand." And then the king is like. Uh, no, he's he's not used to giving anything, so he says, "No, I can't. I won't give." You know, of course, it's a fictional thing. But then uh, he says, "Give me, give me." He says, "I, I can't give." Then the minister thinks, and then he says, "Oh, king, take my hand." And then the king reaches out immediately and holds his hand, and then he pulls him out. You know, and the principle is this: that uh, you know, we need to reach out. We need to be open. In order to, you know, receive something, right? So um, this principle, learning principle, like um, you know, we will definitely gain from uh, relationship with others. You know, if we have an arrogant attitude, you know, that arrogant attitude is okay. No one can teach me anything. You know, uh, I'm my own. I I can teach, uh, and and that's not what that is not biblical at all. Right? I remember meeting a meeting a pastor who said, uh, you know, he, he was like a one man show. Right? He said, I, um, I, I just asked him, you know, would you like to be prayed for? You know, because there was another uh, person and uh, man of God. Um, then he said, no, 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 it's okay. You know, I have direct connection with God, um, so he didn't want to be prayed for, ministered to, right? Uh, because this was, I think, a prophetic ministry. So then we asked, you know, do you like to be prayed for? And then he said he refused. Okay, so um, you know, somewhere like that. Okay, I I don't want anyone to teach me, to, to help me, to minister to me. So that's an arrogant attitude. Okay, the very reason that we see fivefold ministry in the church is that well the people can be raised up okay so for people to be taught to minister right to be all the saints to be taught to minister and um, which means that we need to be able to receive learn in order to give in order to grow right so um, so it's a very unbiblical thing uh, unscriptural okay 
so it's an arrogant attitude the other one is a very simplistic naive attitude that you know here you are as a teacher and you can teach me everything that i need to know in life now that's a very that's a very naive thing right it's 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 not that is also not that is also incorrect right well some there's a limit to people, what people have people know and uh, well god uses them in certain ways they have they have uh, you know technical know how or life experience in one thing but not in all things right so it's a very naive attitude to have to say that okay this person can teach me everything that i need to know so all i need to do is just latch on this is see this person can teach me everything that's a very naive attitude a teachable attitude is that well everyone can teach me something no no that's the right attitude to have that everyone can teach me something um it can and like like we said it can come from the most unlikeliest of sources right and and the lord will use uh, such people to bring something into our lives and we need to be able to you know we need to be able to uh, focus on 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 that be open to that in order to receive and it can be some amazing valuable lessons life changing even right and i remember you know when i was living a very double life a very carnal life as a believer and uh, you know week week days i used to travel on work and and uh, stay in hotels and so on and and live a completely different life from that of a weekend I, and weekends i'd be home and in church so uh, and i remember once that uh, when i when i came back from such a trip and i was back and then it was a it was it was a vacation bible school and it was a uh, that weekend it, they had put a lot of things on display and um the kids had put a lot of things on display they put charts and paintings and i think i remember sharing this so one 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 such kid just looks at me and then looks at, i was asking her to explain you know what she drew uh, and then she she went on to explain she just looked into my eyes and said the lord you know jesus can forgive everything uncle you know he can forgive he loves us and he he forgives us uh, and you know and the lord used her to i was just listening to her and i just couldn't stand there i had to rush out because i was just you know beginning to cry so um uh, and the lord used her it was the most unlikely of sources it was a it was a kids thing you know putting up displays of you know paintings and and models and everything that they had done and uh, during that vbs and they put that on display on sunday and then boom here it is right so god speaks so we need to have a teachable attitude well that was a saving moment for me and the lord was drawing me closer um through those things so it can be it can be impartation of wisdom it can be so many things right um and we might miss out and it, it, we might close the door on that if we have an arrogant attitude okay we see that the lord jesus learned or uh, even as he grew up now luke chapter 2 talks about that right he he grew in wisdom and uh, in stature right and uh, he learned things as he grew up paul uh, in his silent years obviously right we don't know much about it but then he grew in knowledge and wisdom right and so um, much learning comes uh, even as we even as we have an attitude uh, which is open where we say okay god you know you teach right? first we know that uh, you know we, we don't swallow everything that people just put across as believers we have the holy spirit in us who who uh, spirit of revelation and wisdom and the word of god you know in us uh, and so we can discern right and the whole if we would allow the, what is right what is good counsel uh, we discern that right and we receive it okay so um, as we spend time with people as we spend time with people of uh, maybe uh, who who are who have gone further on you know in in their life experience and spiritually mature spiritually gifted uh, and and so on as we uh, spend time uh, learning is also 
you know, we learn by observation, of course. Uh, we learn, but it's also something that is intentional in the sense in our interaction with them, in our uh, asking of questions, right? In our asking of questions and uh, at the appropriate time, of course. And in asking questions, there is a lot of learning. Okay. So we see that uh, the, uh, the learning principle. So why are we looking at these things? So that we can be others focused, right? The learning principle also helps us because if we interact with people and say, okay, what is it that I can learn from this interaction? What is it that I can learn from this person? Okay, we, maybe we can ask and then we learn something and something new uh, and it becomes a very enriching life, right? And so we don't see people as, um, you know, people, we don't have to look at people as inconveniences or, you know, we don't have to really, you know, tolerate, but it can be an enriching experience, right? Okay. Um, then let me see what is it about the, uh, okay, we'll look at it. This is probably after the break. Uh, any questions so far or anything that you might want to share? Um, Right now, we looked at three of these principles, focusing on others. Um, any questions or any personal experience before we move on? Anything? In now, I think uh, we, we have experienced uh, all this, but it's very nice to actually, uh, you know, picture this as a learning uh, when we yeah. talk about people, and uh, it's quite interesting that we can actually learn from this. <laughs> right, awesome. right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So true because um, then, uh, yeah, then we don't look at you know interaction with people as inconveniences, and and I mean uh, that was the last one that we saw, uh, but also the other other two also, yeah. It's true. Yeah, Divya, you have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, Pastor, I just wanted to share something. Yeah, uh, yeah especially uh, what uh, you just said uh, regarding the humility that mm -hmm. we need in order to, uh, you know, even look at others and learn, however small. I really mm -hmm. love the, um, uh, uh, the experience that you had, that you shared. Yes, I, mm -hmm. uh, I also had a time in my life, you know, when I couldn't, the identity crisis uh, was so big for me. And, uh, but, uh, and those times, even if uh, well-meaning people say things that are good, uh, I couldn't accept it, you know? I would take it as criticisms, uh, like very negative. Uh, but uh, by God's grace, yeah, God, uh, God helped me understand, uh, you know, the right perspective. Uh, to look at myself and that helped me in turn to uh, you know look at the even positive uh, uh, like constructive criticisms uh, mm. get them and uh, to think what i can change uh, uh, to look not at the you know the what way they say or the mm. uh, tone they use or you know the mode they have use but right. uh, just to look at the subject or the topic that they're trying to address uh, right. so, yeah that really helped me um so much so one uh, one uh, great takeaway is that humility is so much required uh, for right. us to uh, look at others and learn as well as to look at our own uh, you know if there are things that are wrong on our part mm. Even accept it and admit it, and just just go right. on, just improve on that. So there's so right. much of freedom in that, mm -hmm. but when we do not understand that, we hold on to uh, yeah. those things that really prevent us from. Yeah, so progress. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So true. just wanted to share that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So true. The, the thing is, uh, humility before people who are not humble. <laughs> you know, that's the difficult thing, right? Uh, to be humble before humble people is is easy. To be humble before people who are not so humble, I mean, I'm, that, that's going to take Christ in us, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Okay, we'll take a break and then we'll come back. Yeah, thank you. 